All right, so today we're going to talk about how to measure and improve marketing performance with analytics. Um, these are things that are going to help you make decisions on where to spend your marketing dollars. It's going to help you identify the things that are working, the things that aren't working, um, and you know the things that maybe you just don't need to be spending your time on. Today, we're going to talk about specific metrics, not just overall reports to look at. Um, and we're going to do that through each stage of the marketing funnel. Um, trying to monitor every single metric is going to overwhelm you. It's going to eat up your time that you could be spending doing the things that you love, that you're good at. Uh, knowing what to look for is the first step in figuring out how to improve your marketing performance. In this presentation, you're going to learn what the key metrics are, how to interpret them, and what to do to keep your marketing plan on track. There are four different categories of metrics that we're going to look at. Um, these are based on the marketing funnel. So the marketing funnel at the top is the awareness. And then as it gets down a little bit lower, it's consideration and then retention at the end. True North metrics though, these are those big picture metrics that I think most business owners have a good handle on, but they're the goals that at the end of the day matter the most. So even if all the other metrics in the funnel are perfect, ideally, um, if the True North metrics aren't exactly where you want them to be, none of the marketing matters. The awareness metrics, are at, <laughs> typo there, sorry guys, the top of the funnel. This is gonna show your brand's reach. It's gonna show how far your message is being spread. And it measures the awareness that your audience and that the community has to your brand and your product. Consideration is that next step in the marketing funnel. It's the individual elements of your marketing plan and how well they're working. So as the audience moves through the sales funnel to the second stage, this is where your goal is gonna be con conversions. And then finally, and this is the part that um, I think most business owners have a good handle on is retention. So once they are, these clients or customers are already clients and customers of yours, they're already spending money with you, the final stage of that marketing funnel is to keep them and get them to continue spending money with you. So the goal there is to measure the loyalty of your existing customers and then start generating revenue from that customer base. Your true north metrics, uh, there's five of them. The first one is revenue, pretty self-explanatory. You wanna bring in money. Uh, the second one is CLTV, which is your customer lifetime value. And the elements of that is the average that the customer is spending, the frequency, the frequency with which they are spending with you, and then the average lifespan. So the average amount of time that they are spending money with your company. Um, number three is going to be your customer acquisition cost. So that is the amount that the customers, the amount of money it takes to generate a customer with you. Uh, number four is cost per lead, same, same principle. Uh, the amount of money it takes to generate a lead. And then the last one is your marketing return on investment. So how much money do you have to put out and how much money are you getting back? Like, what are you profiting from the amount of money you're putting into your marketing efforts? Revenue, money, I'm not gonna talk down to you guys on money. Um, then we have customer lifetime value. So it's how much a customer spends with you on average each time they buy and how often they buy, how long they're a customer. The way to calculate your customer lifetime value is first you need to get the average purchase value. So the total yearly revenue that you're bringing in, you're gonna divide that by the total number of sales you've made in that year or you know, month, whichever period you're, you're trying to calculate this for. 
The second one is the average purchase frequency rate. So the number of purchases in a year divided by the number of unique customers. So if you have a thousand purchases being made, um, but only 500 people um, making you know, two purchases or, or more at a time, those are the numbers you wanna use. Uh, customer value is the average purchase value multiplied by the average frequency rate. And the customer lifespan is the average number of years, months, weeks, whatever you're seeing in your business um, that the customer does business with you. And then once you get down to your customer lifespan, you have that figured out, you can multiply the customer value by the customer lifespan. And that's how you have your customer lifetime value. Okay, uh, customer acquisition cost is just the amount of marketing dollars it takes to acquire a new client. Um, you're gonna divide the amount of money spent on a marketing initiative by the number of customers obtained through that same channel. Same thing with cost per lead. You know, the amount of marketing dollars it takes to acquire a lead. You're gonna divide the amount of money spent on a particular marketing initiative um, by the number of leads that you obtained through that same channel. And then your MROI. So this is your marketing return on investments. Uh, it is defined as the contribution to your company's profit attributable to your marketing efforts. You divide the amount of money spent on marketing initiatives and divide that by the revenue generated. Or, so there's two ways you can calculate it. I like the first one, but you could also divide the amount of money spent on marketing initiatives by your calculated customer lifetime value. Uh, number two gets you a lot more of a granular specific number. Number one is just more of a, a general gauge on how are we doing? How's this going? You know, are we wasting our time trying to do uh, this, this type of marketing? Should we be switching? strategy. So the awareness metrics are um, where I think we're going to be spending the most time today. Uh, this has everything to do with analytics and technology and reporting. Um, so here's this is where I want to spend most of our time. Um, so there are four awareness metrics. The first one is website traffic. How many people are coming to your website? Uh, the second one is social media reach. Um, views, likes, shares, you know, depending on the, the platform that you're on, duets, stitches, remixes, whatever you wanna, retweets. Um, and there are two different types when it comes to social media advertising and marketing. Uh, there's the organic and then the paid. And we'll talk about both of them. Uh, the third is brand metrics and searches or brand mentions and searches, uh, the amount of people talking about you online. And number four is engagement. How long are people staying on your site? How long are they staying on your landing page? How many pages on your site are they visiting? Are they visiting your page and then bouncing right off? Uh, these are things that you wanna keep track of just to see you know, how well you're appealing to your audience and if maybe your website needs some optimization. Website traffic. There are six different types of traffic that your website could potentially generate. Um, direct traffic used to just mean people typing your website's URL into the browser. Now, Google is categorizing it as anything they can't attribute. So if, they, if Google's not 100% sure where that traffic came from, they're just gonna call it direct. So that is a little bit frustrating and confusing, but it is what it is. Um, referral traffic comes from links to your domain on other people's websites. So, if somebody else, right, if you're a plumber and somebody else writes a blog about 
plumbing and they say, oh, you know, check out this, this plumber's page for a great example, um, and they link back to your page, that's gonna be referral traffic. Um, organic search, organic search is ideal. This is where you want most of your traffic to come from because it's free. So organic search is users that came to your site, your landing page, your social media page, whatever it is that you're tracking um, by finding you in the search engine results page. So if, if somebody were to search for digital marketers and my you know, adventure web pops up in the list of search engine results, someone clicks it and goes to the adventure website, that's gonna be an organic search result. That's ideal. Um, that, that whole concept, there's an entire industry built around it, the search engine optimization. The, the higher you get, you can get your site to be on a list of search engine results pages, the better off you're gonna be. People are gonna click usually more often than they would if you were on the lower end of the page or on the third, fourth, fifth page. Um, social traffic is coming from your social media sites. So someone that searches, you know, best digital marketers on Facebook or Pinterest, and then comes to the site after clicking the adventure web profile. Um, that is social traffic. Um, paid search is traffic coming from your pay-per-click advertisements. So if you're advertising on Google, um, either display or you know search um, search ads that are the little ad pack that you see at the top of search engine results pages, that's going to be your paid search traffic. And then email. So a lot of people I know do email marketing. They send out you know newsletters or flash sales things like that, um, and that's gonna be your email traffic. Does anybody have any questions on that before we dive in? I know it can take a, a second for some questions to get typed out, so I'll stall for anybody who's still typing their question. I actually, I can, I can ask a question real quickly. I know you mentioned, you sort of highlighted organic search um, as being important. Is there one that's more valuable than the others um, here on this, this screen? Um, organic search is always nice to have, but you can't, it's hard to invest in that, right? Mm -hmm. Is there one that people should be paying more attention to as far as putting their dollars towards them? So it's hard to say that you're directly investing in organic search. Um, you can invest in search engine optimization. Um, services like blogging, like geo pages, like adding the schema to the site, um, getting reviews on on your Google My Business. Uh, those are all things that are going to boost your search, you know, your your search engine result ranking. Um, and things that, if if you don't have the time to do them yourself. Um, and they can be a full-time job that you're probably going to have to hire a marketer or a freelancer to do. Uh, so that's that's really where you can um, put your investment. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is schema? That's from Bianca. So schema is very technical. Um, it is, um, let me find a good way to explain this. Um, schema markup is, if you go to schema.org, it's S-C-H-E-M-A.org, um, it's micro data. So it's data that this schema technology um, injects into your site, um, talking that just tells Google and the Google search bot um, what your site's about on a really small level. Um, so it, if Google is gonna uh, crawl your site to see what it's about, which they do constantly, um, the easier it is for 
Google to verify this is what this site says it's about and this is what it's actually about, the higher you're going to rank in search engine results. Um, it is something that is, like I said, a little bit technical to kind of install and, and get going, um, but it is, it's important. Alrighty, we got one more question that came in from Jennifer. Uh, in your opinion, what's your um, what's your opinion on newsletters uh, to get email traffic? Are they effective? You know, it it depends on the industry and it depends on your audience. So, if if you're doing newsletters and you're seeing that they're not your your particular audience, your customers um, is not responding well to them. That doesn't mean that newsletters as a whole aren't effective. It just means that that's not how your audience likes to engage. Um, so pivot into a different direction. Um, I think newsletters are always a good idea. Just, you know, it might not translate to an on paper ROI, but it keeps you top of mind. And it just kind of, keeps your name, your products in your customers' minds. Um, obviously, you don't want to send a thousand emails because you're going to annoy people. Um, but um, I, I like newsletters. I personally don't generally see a direct result from them when it comes to purchases, um, but they're great for brand awareness. I think that answered the question nicely. I don't see any others. So it looks like we can keep it moving. All right. So this is an example of a Google Analytics um, report. So Google Analytics is free. You can sign up through Google and they will walk you through how to connect your site to it. It's relatively easy. Um, I will tell you, though, that at the current time, the Google Analytics product is called Universal Analytics, or UA, and they are sunsetting this product. So it, this is going to go out the window by the end of you know, July 2023 is when the new product is coming out. Well, it's already out, but... Um, they'll exclusively be using the new product, which is GA4, Google Analytics 4. So if you're gonna run from this call and go get a Google Analytics, make sure you get Google Analytics 4, because if you don't, you're gonna have to migrate all of your data in about a year, and that's annoying. Um, if you are currently running ads, make sure you get Google Analytics 4 connected to your ads account because after July of 2023, it will no longer record um, your ad data in Universal Analytics. Um, so once you sign up for analytics and you get your property set up, there are tons of great tutorials on YouTube and on Google about how to do it. Um, Google has excellent customer support. They can help you through it as well. The first thing that you want to track is where your traffic's coming from. Um, you know, we need to know where to spend our money. Um, and that is going to be in your channels report. So to get there, this is your, you can go to your home page, and then number one, here is you go to acquisition, all traffic, and then channels. And this shows you, you see here, how many people are coming to your page in a given, you can change your, uh, your time frame up here. So how many people are coming to your page from organic search? How many people found you um, via search engine results? That's the number you want to be as high as possible. Uh, direct, again, these are the people that either type your name directly into the URL bar 
or they um, came to you from a way that Google can't attribute. Social people that came from your uh, social channels and referral, so links on other sites. Something you also wanna pay attention to is new users. You'll notice under users here, it says 124, but new users, it's 120. So what we can get from that is that four people came back that had previously been on your site within, um, I believe the, the uh, prior 30 days. And then sessions are 133. So of these 124 users on the site, they came to the site 133 times. So that means people are coming back to your site which is good, that's what you want. Bounce rate, um, people that are coming to your site and not, if, if say they land on the homepage, you know, they find you in search results and it takes them to your homepage. They, they come to the homepage and then they don't navigate to another page on your site. They, they bounce off, that's your bounce rate. Um, generally, we wanna see this below 70%. There are some times in which it's okay. It's acceptable for the bounce rate to be a little bit higher. Um, and that's a whole lesson in its own. Um, and then pages per session. So the average number of pages that a person went to on the site while they were on your site. So did they come to the homepage and then navigate to the services tab? That's what we want. Um, we want that to be as high as possible. Um, an average of 1.63 is pretty good. Um, generally wanna see that around two. So that is how you're gonna identify where on the internet your traffic's coming from. Awesome, we had one question come through. You yep. were talking about uh, Google Analytics 4. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, what is the difference going to be? Any Are there any new fun uh, tools that they're adding to it or I you know I don't know all the differences yet because we haven't transitioned all of our clients over to it um, my impression of it though is unfortunately that it is not as user-friendly um, it is more robust the reporting is more accurate and it's more in line with the reporting that you're gonna see in Google Ads and Google Search Console, which by the way, if you are looking in these three reporting platforms and you see different numbers for the same metric, that's okay as long as they're not, you know, you don't have zero and 2000 on one. Um, the way that they, the way that these different platforms collect data is, is different. They have different queries and different, some of them use SQL, some of them don't. So um, GA4, um, you know, I, I think it's more robust. I think it is more accurate. Um, but with that kind of comes the, the negative aspect of the fact that it's uh, a little bit less user-friendly for um, lay people, I would say. Gotcha. Thank you. It sounds like I'll be on YouTube learning a whole new language. Yes, it's super fun. Fun stuff. Thanks. Um, so there with Google Analytics, there are literally thousands of metrics that you could track. Um, there are hundreds of reports and just not all of them matter for small and medium businesses. Um, it's it's just not worth the time and learning how to use all of them. So these are the top 10 that I would say are gonna give you the best picture of what your marketing projects are looking like. Um, you wanna see how many users, how many people are coming to your site, how many sessions. <clears throat> um, you know, the difference between a user and a session is just a user is, a per the person that comes to the site and a session is um, the actual use of the site. Um, 
Third is session duration. So how long they're staying on your site and pages per session, how many pages they're going to while they're on your site. Are they just coming to the homepage or the landing page and then going somewhere else? Or are they um, coming to your homepage and then gonna go look at your blog? Or are they coming to uh, your landing page from your ads and now they're gonna go see what your services are? Um, percentage of new sessions. So new se percentage of new sessions is how many of these sessions or users that are coming onto your site are brand new to you? And that's gonna show you how well you're reaching your audience and how well the community is becoming aware of you and your brand. Bounce rate, which we talked about. Um, goal completions. Uh, goal completions are conversions in uh, Google Ads, um, which we can we'll talk about in a, a later slide. Uh, the landing page report. So on that report, you will see which pages on your site people are visiting the most. Uh, the source slash medium report. Uh, so that's going to show within each channel exactly uh, where your traffic's coming from. So if you go and look at your social channel and you go to your source, then you go down into source and medium, it'll show you you've got 10 people coming from Facebook, you know, four from Twitter, you know, three from LinkedIn, that kind of thing. And then the last one is the channels, which is organic, direct, referral, um, and social. Okay, so this is your dashboard on Google Analytics. When you sign in, this is your home. You can find most of the information that you need on your homepage. Um, you'll see right up here, it has your users, sessions, bounce rate, and your session duration. Um, and then over here on the left, is where you're gonna to go to find some of that more granular data. This is also the dashboard. It's just a little bit further down on the screen. Um, just a quick glance of where your, your traffic is coming from. Whoa, go back. Um, over here, it shows you when people are using your page the most, what time of day. Here's where they are coming from. Um, you know, for example, if you operate solely in Maryland, you don't operate in Canada, you don't operate in Europe or Asia, and you look at this and you see, my first glance, I look at this and I see that there are people from Turkey and Canada visiting. Um, I, we don't really want that. That's kind of a waste of your money because you can't work with those people, right? So at that point, you need to get with your IT company to get a continent locker put on your website. Um, what pages? This is the landing page report, like very, very mini. And then this is your trend over time. You can't see uh, the percentages here, but this will show you what devices people are using when they access your site. So. Mobile is generally going to be your biggest, uh, your biggest part here. Uh, this is desktop, and then this little guy here is probably tablet. Okay, so this is your acquisition overview. This is one of those reports that you're going to find over here in the left. You go to acquisition, and then overview. And it shows you over a given time period um, how many people are coming from each channel, the bounce rate for each channel. And you can kind of see here, you know, a little bit of the trend. You know, maybe, you know, for this site, we would look at it and see, like, whoa, what happened on March 17th? Like, people, it, it kind of plummeted. Why? What happened? Um, Another way that you can use this report is you see, okay, 
I have 53 people that came from direct, um, but they had a, a 90% bounce rate. Why? Why are people that are coming to me directly having such a high bounce rate? Maybe I need to look at how fast is my site loading? How fast um, are the videos playing? That kind of thing. We'll talk about site optimization a little bit later. Um, this is the audience overview. This is different from the acquisition overview. So also over here on your left, you go to audience and then overview. You'll also see here, um, I didn't choose to go into these, these type of metrics, but these are, these are interesting. Um, so you can see your demographics. You can see that goes into um, gender, age, um, I forget what else. Um, and then there's mobile and interests, and then geographic. So um, again, if you are operating solely in Maryland and you go to your geo tab and you see you've got people in Nebraska clicking, ooh, that's not great. You got, you got to dive into that a little bit. Um, but on this report, again, you are seeing your users. You can see how many are new visitors and how many are returning visitors. Again, this is going to show you how far you're reaching. If you have the majority of your visitors as new visitors, that's ideal. People are finding you. They're seeing you. They're, they're coming to your site. Okay, before we go to the landing page report, does anybody have any questions on acquisition and audience? It looked like we had two that came through. One was from David. What's the benefit of content blockers from markets that you don't serve? Uh, continent blockers. Um, so if you uh, block the whole continent of Europe, then you're not, you're, you're telling Google, like, don't, don't show me to those people. So Google will show you to the people that you want. Uh, you have to keep in mind, Google doesn't get paid if people aren't clicking on ads and sites. Um, so it is in their best interest to show you to the people that are going to click, that are going to go to your site, um, because that's going to encourage people to use Google more. Great. And Beth? Welcome back. Uh, she's asking, if I look at my uh, Google My Business page, I have 95 searches in the last 30 days, uh, but nothing that's showing in Google Analytics. Do I have to do something to activate it? Uh, you might have to connect them um, and integrate them. Um, Google My Business will probably show up as either direct or organic. So it could be in there and you might have to get down into the more granular reports of uh, the source and medium. All righty. Those were the only two that came in while you were on that last topic. Great. Okay, so your landing page report. Um, this is gonna help you increase your search engine optimization. This is gonna be your, um, this is my, my go-to report. You come over here on the left and it is behavior and then site content and then your landing pages. Um, landing pages are pages that people came to your site from somewhere else. Search engines, they came from um, a link on someone else's page from social, from an ad that you posted. Um, and then they came to your site, they landed on your site. Um, the pages that have the higher number of people that came to your site are the ones that you wanna pay the most attention to because that's where people like to be. This top one here confuses everyone. It's just a backslash. That's your home page. So good news if people are going to your home page. Um, oftentimes, 
and this, this is what I do for every advertising campaign. Um, I have a custom land, landing page built for that ad campaign because I want people to see the ad, they click the ad, and then they end up on this landing page that I have created just for people that came from this ad. Um, that it helps the ad score. It lets Google know that like, hey, they said this ad is about shoes and they put us on a landing page that is actually about shoes. So like, yeah, this is good. It's reliable you can go check them out. Um, that's good. And it gives clients a lot of the information that they might need. Um, I always have a form for them to fill out too. Um, just a good little sales funnel. That will sometimes be on on, well, it will always be on here if, if you're running one like that. Um, this client does not run any advertising. They do SEO though with us and uh, they do blogs. So this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, of the top seven landing pages, I mean, of the top 10 landing pages, seven of them are blogs that we've written. So, that's showing that people are searching for the keywords that we're using in these blogs and then they're getting to the blog and then getting to the site. So that is one way that you can invest in organic traffic. Oh goodness, okay, goal completions. Um, goals can be a little bit tricky to set up in analytics, but on, at the end of this slide, I have a list of websites and tutorials that I'm going to give you guys. And one of them is how to set up a goal in analytics. So there are four different types of goals that you can set up. And these are basically, they're, they're conversions. Google just calls them goals. Um, this client is tracking contact form submissions and number of pages viewed. Um, more than three, <clears throat> which is great. If you can get 107 people to visit more than three pages on your website, that's awesome. Um, and then, you know, contact forms are um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then there are other goals called um, events. So events can be things like uh, they watched a video that you had on your page um, or they, they clicked a particular page. Um, there are literally thousands of options for events, um, but most people use um, contact form or phone calls. So those can be found over here on the left um, under conversions, goals, and then overview. And you can assign a goal value um, I generally, I generally don't unless it's um, purchase related. So if I had an e-commerce customer that sold books for $5 a piece, um, I can put a goal value of $5 and the goal can be a purchase. So from that, we can see, you know, we had 150 goals and we made $700 or, you know, whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, and then there are, there's the goal conversion rate. Uh, so how many people are coming to your site as divided by how many people are completing goals? Okay, ways to increase your website traffic. Um, On-page SEO. <clears throat> that is things like um, blogging, uh, geo landing pages. So geo landing pages are pretty much just geographically targeted blogs that uh, you link kind of to your areas served pages on your website. Uh, keyword research. So if you're going to be adding consistent content to your site um, in the form of blogs or uh, geo pages or just landing pages, things like that, do some keyword research on what people are talking about and you know what the difficulty is, what the competition's like. 
Um, <clears throat> there are free tools to do that. Um, one is called SEMrush, so S-E-M, Search Engine Marketing Rush. Um, WordStream is another one that's good. Um, Ahrefs, that one is paid, um, but it's A, H as in Henry, R, E as in Edward, F as in Frank, S as in Sam.com. Um, internal linking. So you link, I don't know, from a blog that you wrote about uh, lawn care, and you can link within your blog to your own lawn care service page on your website. Uh, email marketing, mobile responsiveness and site speed. So make sure that um, your site is mobile responsive and make sure that it's loading quickly. Uh, you can check your site speed in Google Analytics. There's also a Google page called uh, Page Insights or Page Speed Insights. And you just paste your URL into the search bar and then it'll give you a whole score and what you need to do to fix it. <clears throat> You know, in the marketing community, we used to say that content is king. Um, I think that is still true, but I think videos are uh, coming up pretty close on their heels. Uh, Google acquired YouTube and they are now showing videos in search results. And lots of people are clicking those instead of going down into the search results. So if you can add videos to your site, especially if they're informative, that's gonna help you with your organic traffic. Um, and then reviews. So um, if you have a bunch of good reviews on your Google My Business, um, that's gonna encourage people to click on you instead of uh, you know, maybe someone who um, has been in business longer or um, you know, has a higher ranking web page. Uh, okay, so social media is the next the next part, um, try, okay, so we're, we're running a little bit low on time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through just a little bit. Um, so social media reach um, is an indicator of how and where your content is being distributed across each social media platform. Um, there's two types, organic and paid, just like on Google. So you can pay for ads, you can boost your posts, and that's going to be your paid stuff. And then organic is just people that find your content and they like it and they share it. Um, and that's going to boost you higher in the algorithms as well. Brand mentions and searches. Um, who's talking about you online? Are they talking about you on social media? Are they um, writing blogs about you? Are there news stories about you? Um, you want to keep track of that. Um, again, just to see what your reach is like, um, to track that. There are free tools and paid tools. Um, so there's the free tool is Google Alerts. So you can set that up and it'll give you a daily or weekly, um, they call it a digest, like a list of who's talking about you and where and what they're saying. Um, and they'll just email that to you. Um, and then you wanna see who's searching for you. So if, if your company is named um, reallygreatsite.com, um, you can go into your search console if you have that set up, which is a course in its own. Um, and you, you'll be able to see exactly who's searching for reallygreatsite.com. Um, and, and that'll help you figure out which keywords to use. So if you've got 200 people searching for your exact co company's name, you might wanna start adding those as keywords um, within your blogs, your website content, or uh, your ads. Um, engagement, we talked about this a little bit, um, how long people are staying on your page and are they bouncing off? Are they interacting with your content? Are they moving from one page to another? Uh, and then consideration. Uh, Clay, tell me what, what you want here. I mean, are we good on time? Yeah, I think we, if you are okay, we can go for another five or 10 minutes. All right, I'm good. So consideration metrics. They, this is the next stage in the funnel. 
So you have your funnel up here, awareness. This is where the most people are gonna be. And then the next stage in the funnel is your consideration. It's a little bit lower, it's a little bit less people. Um, these are people that have found you. They realized, okay, I like these people. Like, let's look into them a little bit further. Uh, the first one is gonna be, you wanna find out where your conversions are coming from. Uh, so you've got people that are converting. Are they coming from organic? Are people that are coming from uh, social media more likely to buy from you? Uh, because if you find out that that's the case, then that's really when you, where you wanna allocate your marketing money. Uh, landing page performance. The number of visitors you're generating for your website versus your landing pages. And call to action performance. Um, there are two different types of calls to action, which we'll talk about. So your conversion by source. Conversion rates, uh, you're gonna use that source slash medium report that we talked about um, in Google Analytics. Um, the channels report and the goals report in Google Analytics also will help you track your highest converting marketing efforts. Um, and to do that, <clears throat> you're gonna divide the number of goals that were achieved or the number of conversions in a given time frame by the number of visitors to your website. And then you're gonna multiply that by 100 and that's a percentage. Okay, so your landing page performance. Um, it can either be specific pages on your website that the searcher landed on, uh, like a blog, or a, um, a standalone landing page that you had built for an advertising campaign. Um, or it can just be the website as a whole, protect, like particularly your homepage normally. Um, and that's gonna help you track also which marketing efforts are doing the best and you know maybe where you need to shift some money. Um, the metrics for this that you wanna track are the total visits to the landing page. And that's gonna be in that landing page report that we talked about. Uh, the traffic source, which we talked about where it's coming from, the total conversions, how many people are actually completing the action that you want them to complete, and then the conversion rate. Um, you can track your conversion rate for the whole website. You can track it for a particular landing page. Um, and you can even go as granular as tracking the conversion rate of a particular traffic source on a particular page. Okay, calls to action performance. Um, for this one, you wanna measure the click-through rate of your calls to action and look for ways to optimize the content in a way that encourages the user to click. Um, click-through rate, CTR, is uh, people that are, they see your ad or they see the site and they, well, for this, for the calls to action, it's gonna be ads mostly um, or social media posts. Um, so they see it and then they click through it. And it looks like I didn't <laughs> put on here what the definition of a conversion call to action was. Um, but so there's a navigational call to action and then a conversion call to action. Um, a navigational call to action is one that encourages the person viewing it uh, to move to the next stage in the funnel. So uh, if you have something on a post that is uh, like, learn more or uh, watch our video, uh, that's gonna be your navigational call to action because that pushes them from awareness into convert or into consideration. And then your conversion call to action is, you know, buy now, subscribe now, call now, contact us, uh, those type of thing that uh, leave that person from the consideration phase into purchasing. Um, okay, and then, so the retention metrics are uh, very uh, math heavy. Um, these are metrics that are going to be 
what you're looking for from your existing customer base. Uh, this is not so much acquiring new customers as it is generating revenue from the customers that you already have. Um, so does anybody have any questions on consideration before I bombard you with math? Mm -hmm. Let's see, it looks like I might have missed a question from a previous topic. It was about bounce rate. Uh, okay. do, you have, do you have any strategies on how to lower bounce rates? Yeah, um, <coughs> bounce rate, there's so many reasons that it could be. Um, so if, it, if you're looking at a landing page from an ad, it's pretty expected that people are gonna bounce right off because you want them to go to other areas of your site. Um, so that's not anything to really be alarmed at. Um, but if you're looking at the site as a whole, um, the first thing that I would look at is what your page speeds are. Um, sometimes people will come to your site and they'll see um, that little buffering thing, or you know, there's images broken, or the images just won't load, and then they're like, forget it, and they go somewhere else. Um, so that's the first thing that, that I would look at. Um, the second thing is what the experience is like on the page. You know, are they coming to the page and they see, oh my gosh, this site looks like it's from 1993? Or are they coming to the page and they're seeing, oh great, look at all this information that I have right here. Um, I don't need to go anywhere else. Um, there's also something to be said for people that are coming to your website and they're bouncing off because they're calling you um, or they submitted a, a, a web form, like a lead form. Um, so the biggest issues that I think people face with bounce rates is mobile. So make sure your, your site is mobile responsive and make sure that it is very fast on mobile because especially people that are searching on their phone, they need something quick. And if your site doesn't load quickly, they're just gonna go somewhere else. Awesome, thanks. We got a thank you from David. And yeah, let's, uh, let's do a little math, I guess, and then we can start wrapping up. Yay, math, okay. Customer churn, um, the rate at which customers stop buying or subscribing to you. Um, Number two is your existing customer revenue growth rate. Uh, revenue generated only by your existing customers. And then number three is your net promoter score. Um, so that measures how satisfied and how loyal your current customers are. Customer churn um, happens when a customer maybe cancels a subscription with you. Um, or they stop using your services. Um, you know, for example, we have services that are people pay monthly. Um, and if, you know, if there comes a point where they're like, hey, we don't want this service anymore, uh, that's gonna go into your, your customer churn. Um, and then, or customer just stops buying your products. Um, you know, I purchase a lot from Amazon. I probably will never stop purchasing a lot from Amazon. Um, but if I did, that's, that's where I would fall into it. Um, so how to calculate it is you're going to subtract the number of customers you had at the start of a period. Most people calculate this by month, depending on the size of your business. Um, so at the start of your period or the period that you're looking at, um, you had 200 customers. And then at the end of it, you had 150 customers. So you subtract the number that you had at the start from the number at the end. And then you take that number and divide it by the number of the customers at the start of the period again. And that's gonna give you a percentage. So the example here is if on March 1st, you had 200 and on March 31st, you had 150, you take 150 minus 200 and then that number you divide by 200 again, and that's gonna give you your churn percentage. Existing customer revenue growth rate, uh, the rate at which, at which your existing customer base continues to purchase from your, your business. Um, 
So you have your monthly recurring revenue. So if I have, you know, 10 people that are spending $100 a month with me, you know, I know, I know what my, my monthly recurring revenue is. I can plan for that every month. Um, so you're going to subtract the monthly recurring revenue at the end of a specific month from the revenue from the beginning of that month. And then divide that result by the revenue at the start of the month. So <clears throat> if on March 1st, you had a monthly recurring revenue of $3,000. And on March 31st, you got a couple more customers and now it's $3,500. You have a gross, or well, your customers started spending a little bit more with you. Um, excuse me. Uh, your growth rate there is 16.67%. So with that, you can decide do I want to spend more money on making my current customers happy or do I want to spend more money on acquiring new ones? Because if your growth rate is going down, that's bad news. Um, if it's going up by leaps and bounds, that's great. You're really satisfying your current customers and it might be time to put some more um, value towards them. Net promoter score. So, this can be calculated in, well, you can get this in a few different ways. Uh, there are tools that you can use um, like Medallia, like uh, there's one called like Survey, Survey Scrum or something like that. Um, again, um, at the end of the presentation, I have an article in there in the resources um, with some tools for your net promoter score. But uh, your net promoter score is a one to 10 rating on how satisfied your customers are with your services or products. Um, your score is gonna be either positive or negative, and it can be anywhere from negative 100 to positive 100. Um, I will tell you that when you calculate this, your score will be lower than you think it is. Um, and that is not, I mean, it's definitely something you want to address, but it's not a reason to freak out. Because if you think about it, as we all know, uh, people that are upset tend to talk to you more than people that are happy. Uh, people that are dissatisfied are gonna leave reviews way more often than people that are really happy with your services. So it being a little bit lower than you'd like it to be is not a cause for a freak out. Um, so what you can do is you can send surveys to people asking them to rate you between one and 10. Um, and again, like I said, there are automated services where they'll send these services out or these surveys out. But customers who rate you below a six um, or a six or below are called detractors. So these are people that they don't like you, they're gonna leave. And the moment they find someone better, they will leave. And they're probably gonna tell people that they don't like you, which is not good. Um, customers with a that give you a score of seven to eight are known as passives. So they're people that are just like, it's okay, like everything's all right. Um, but if they find a better offer or you know, if something else better in their mind comes along, they're gonna bounce. Um, in my opinion, these passives are your biggest area for opportunity. Because if you pay special attention to people that are on the fence, that are just like, meh, um, you could quickly sway a passive to a promoter and in increase your net promoter score. Um, and then customers that give you a score of nine to 10 are known as promoters. These are people that really like you. They recommend you to other people. They post about you. These are, these are great people, right? So to find out what your net promoter score is, you find out which percentage are promoters and which percentage are detractors. So, you know, if you have 100 people that responded and uh, 20 per, 
20 of them uh, were detractors and you know the rest were promoters. Um, that's how you figure out your percentage. So subtract the percentage of promoters from the percentage of detractors. And that's your net promoter score. You don't figure passives into this. Um, passives are, they're just, they're neutral. So they don't really go into the equation. Um, but as I said, these, in my opinion, these people are your, your, biggest, your biggest opportunity um, to go from like eh to a raving fan. And here's all your support websites. <laughs>